Welcome to the Exponential Australia Church Leaders Podcast. Well, g'day Exponential Australia. It's so great to have you with us today as we continue our um, video conversations and podcasts with a variety of different Aussie Christian leaders right across the church who are invested in multiplication and wanting to see um, the church and the kingdom of God advance into our communities all around us. And today, I am joined by Mike and Jenny Wardrop, all the way from Adelaide, Australia, um, who have just had some interesting news this morning, but I'll let them tell you that in a moment. Um, But they lead Encounter Church in Adelaide, which is also part of the Uniting Church, part of the Propel Network, which I'd love to ask them more about today as well. But guys, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, it's great. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Well, why don't you guys just tell us a little bit about yourself, a bit of your backdrop, what's happened this morning, unfortunately, you know, a bit about your family, all that kind of stuff as people get to know you. Sure, sure. Well, uh, yeah, we've been married for about 15 years. Uh, I've been, both of us have been in ministry for a long time now. I guess I've been in uh, vocational ministry for about a dozen years or so. We live in the inner northern suburbs of Adelaide here in Prospect. We've got three amazing children, Grace, Charlie and Noah, who are 13 almost 11 and almost nine you know how important it is for little kids to have that almost yeah 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 Um, yeah it's very important for them and uh as of half an hour ago i had (laughs) COVID-19 the fun continues here we are hot off the press that's right Yes, yeah, exponential thing, growth. The first thing you should know about church planners is you've got to be flexible. So Absolutely. I was meant to be flying to Melbourne in six hours. So that is not happening anymore. Oh, yeah. guys. Absolutely feel for you. But thanks so much for joining us, despite what's going on in your household and must be swirling around in your head at this moment. So, really, well, really. The beauty is, where am I going to go, mate? Like, this is, this is great. You've got you can talk for down. as long as you want. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this interview yeah. might go for an hour rather than half an hour. Ah, it's so good. Well, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about your journey? You guys planted in Counter Church coming up on four years, you said before. Yeah, almost four um, years. What led into that? You know, what is Encounter Church all about? Tell us about your relationship with the Uniting Churches there in South Australia. Would love to just hear some of your journey. Absolutely. We, um, we've we always kind of had a bit of a passion for church planting. Um, not always, for, for many years. Um, and when Mike got ordained, we just really felt the Lord calling us to go and and church plant and so we left a fantastic church that we were at really um sadly we didn't want to leave but felt god calling us to uh and stepped out into absolutely nothing like we had no idea what we were doing no idea whatsoever and um out of nowhere we uh got invited to go on a church planting journey with uh, a couple other people so we went on that journey with them um didn't work out like the the model that they wanted the model we wanted to do just wasn't going to match and so rather than just trying to push things down a rabbit hole of some kind you know we went no no let's actually do what god wants us to do and so we split up we actually made two churches that are both thriving um right now which is awesome um and then we kind of we went about doing um took some time to make sure that this is what god wanted and all that jazz and then um looked at a lot of different church planning models so we looked at lots of different ways we could do it went to every conference you can think of read every book um prayed every prayer to kind of work out what it was and 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 decided that we as like we're both people people like we love being and we love developing teams and leaders that's part of one of our passions and so we thought you know what we want to do is actually want to get a core team together so the first thing we did is we gathered a core team of like maybe five six people something like that Uh, there were eight eight adults all together was there yeah okay and um, gathered them and we then like kind of did lots of things you think of like working out your mission and your goals and like well, who do we actually want to be before we start even going down this road mm. um, and then we went down the um, road of doing interest meetings and gathering a core group that could launch the church and that took probably it took probably longer than we hoped actually Charlie we probably did that for like a year and a bit I reckon year yeah, and a half almost a yeah. yeah and um, before we, and then did a bunch of interest meetings um, gathered a group of about 27 of us, I think it was. Um, and almost four years ago, ran a big, big, large, um, what do you call it? A launch meet, like launch day service kind of thing. And then rocked up the next week to just our core team. It was great. <laughs> and maybe a couple others. <laughs> it wasn't quite that bad. No, yeah. <laughs> I know that feeling though. Definitely that opening service uh, maybe raised the expectations just a Absolutely. little bit. We have lots of friends who love us. And no, we we probably had about 40 people. We did people, it at two o'clock so. in the afternoon, so everyone yeah. was free. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, we weren't competing with anyone, so. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. We went back to our uh, normal time. Of wow. Yeah. 
Amazing. And tell me a bit about, you know, like you, you kind of gave us a wonderful fast track just there, but like, what was it the moment for you guys where you went, God, you are, you are leading us to plant a church. It was a no turning back type moment where you were, you know, as I speak to other planners, I often hear that where, you know, there was a defining moment, maybe a, a season where they just went, Lord, you are leading us to be part of something that we feel horribly out of our depth for, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it was twofold for us, I think. Um, the first was that, you, you know, when we left uh, our previous church journey, which we love very, very much, we didn't leave intending to plant. We mm. left to sense the call of God out. Wow. We were just out. We didn't know what was next. We knew that I'd be vocationally in ministry and we weren't sure exactly how that would look, but we would just stepped out. And mm. it was shortly after that, as we were pursuing a whole bunch of different pathways and seeing where the Lord was, that the church planning idea came up and it was brought to us by a couple of seasoned uh, older, older couples. And when they talked to us about it and left and it was just an idea at that point i was almost in like anxiety attack mode and jenny was just looking at me this is after they left she's like what is wrong with you we haven't agreed to anything we haven't said anything and but it was just that sense of actually something huge is being put on our heart now wow. and this is it this is from god and when that didn't work out and it, and it took quite a bit of uh quite a bit of courage to not just from us but from from the whole team to go to go okay we're going to uh Gwyneth Paltrow and Chris Martin consciously uncouple. And um, and from that, we we grieved. And we grieved yeah. for a couple of months. And at the end of that, we came back towards the Lord and we just said, was this our ego or was this you? Wow. And so we took probably a full month just to ask that question. Uh, and at the end of it, we sort of said, okay, God, if this is from you, you need to bring in the people this time. We're not going to go tapping prospective folk on the shoulder. You need to bring in those first group of people so that we know this is of the Lord and not just of our own ego. Uh, and so that's what happened. We had a few people get in touch with us, some of whom we'd never met in our lives. Yeah. Uh, and they just reached out to us online. We weren't advertising. We weren't communicating. We are in Japan, actually, for some of it. We are just on holidays. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so we, we kind of forced God's hand, classic, like, okay, well, if this battle is yours, Lord, then you fight it, yeah. we will obey, but you you get it sorted for us. And I think the best thing about doing that has been like when the, when trials come, when things happen um, in church planning, we've got that to fall back on and go, actually, yes. no, God, you, you so were in this. So if yeah. something's not happening, why isn't it? Because this is, you know, this is yours. And you know, you always know it's God, but when it, does, when it happens like that, yeah. you know you know that god's in it totally totally yeah. and, and and without making this a tooting our own horn thing because of that like we were just chatting before charlie about how uh we we're just getting asked to leave our building in a few weeks uh, at the end of easter uh, whenever this is released but you know it'll be just after easter uh and for us you know we, we've got a bunch of people we can call we have ideas yeah. the first thing we need to do is go no no put all that to the side okay elders stuff we're praying we're fasting let's go that's happening today let's go and and we were able to do that not because we're super spirit but because god's done it before and wow. and it just and it just helps to build over time builds that yeah. trust over time. Yeah. that's so good guys and you know a, a question that comes to my mind as you guys are sharing uh particularly around your ego like i think um particularly in planting and of course in all sorts of ministry sometimes we're forced as leaders to actually check our ego and when we uh, I think particularly for those who are sitting out on the journey um, of planting, uh, I've heard it said that you can choose to either be humble or be humiliated. Um, mm -hmm. And when it comes to planting, that that can feel like a, a process that is very real. Yeah. Um, and I'm jumping the gun a little bit here, but just to ask, what would you say to someone who's sitting in that place of preparing to plant or thinking about planting or asking the Lord whether, you know, planting is in their future particularly as they're preparing their heart and as they're asking God, what are the things I can do to prepare internally so as to be humble and not be humiliated, but also some, some things can only be learned from experience, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you need to be humiliated and yeah. to, to learn it. And, you know, and I think that depends on who we are and our, and our, I guess our pridefulness, I guess, but look, I think, what would we say to one of them? I, look, I think for me, I'm, I'm a big bat on prayer and fasting. So I believe there's, there is absolute power in prayer, but I think there's a lot of power in fasting. And so we actually, when we, when we started doing this, we just spent a lot of time in prayer and fasting, like a lot. And we, we thought we made everybody that wanted to be a part of our 
core team pray and fast they had to go if they weren't willing to go away and pray and fast for two weeks mm. um, they don't have to, not, not not like not eating for not two weeks <laughs> so but like if they weren't willing to actually do that then they weren't coming on our core team yeah. because we wanted people who were about what god wanted not about what, what they wanted right. and if they weren't willing to sacrifice then they didn't actually want what god wanted yeah mm. i think as well um you know the world desperately needs more church plants more mm. thriving church plants like across capitals and, and and in rural areas everywhere but god does not have to use me yeah he can raise up church planters from the rocks yeah so while we need church plants god can do whatever he wants mm. however he wants yeah. he does not need me and he's kind of like for us he's kind of he kind of proved it to us by by ending the first church plant yeah. going, you guys are not aligned in this you think you are but you're not and uh and so i i think that would be my my best in my best advice for church planners is yeah the the time to create your own platform is is dead is a strong word but let's go with dead wow uh, and and it's and it's not going to help your church you need you need to be compelling yes cast vision yes a little bit of charisma does help but the time to build your own platform is is done and you can read more about that on my personal website um, <laughs> Of which I would at this point want to say that Mike has a wonderful podcast that he's part of. Too. Um, you know, a bit of bit of promotion here along with Katie Oz. What's the name of the podcast again, Mike? Read the Room. Read, Read the, the room. room. Yeah. Which is distinctly Australian, talking to Aussie leaders about, you know, opportunities and challenges in ministry. So definitely go and have a look at that. Um, the next question I want to ask you guys is particularly around... Um, around your relationship with the Uniting Church in South Australia and particularly the Propel Network, which I've often heard of from a distance, you know, a, a group of Uniting Churches that are really passionate about planting and about, you know, um, reaching their community and all the sorts of things that come with some really acute thinking about that. Would you guys just tell people more about the Propel Network and, and what the, you know, the exciting things that are happening in South Australia? Yeah, there is some great things. I think one of the things I love, we're a part of um, Generate Presbytery in the Uniting Church. And one of the things they, one of their, you know, goals is, is growing passionate disciples and, and seeing leaders raised up, young leaders raised up. And I think, and they're so focused on church planting. And so I, we've been really blessed to be around people who are just encouraging us like there's no like don't do this there's no you know this is going to mm -hmm. be hard and, and, and i mean not that they aren't realistic but it's it's that championing thing right. about what we've felt and feel the same thing from propel like they've got a conference coming up in a couple of weeks mike's doing speaking and um there's a few other this whole uh, other don't build names. your own platform thing hasn't gone well in the last two minutes <laughs> <laughs> it's not you but it's it, anyway um like, but i think but in saying that propels championing um, church planning, they're, they're championing, championing young leaders, they're championing. And I think that's what we as a church, and I now look at it and go, Mike and I look at us and go, we're not, we're not young, the young leaders anymore. Like we're not trying to champion people at my age. Like, I mean, I'm not, you know, other people would say that I'm super young, but like for me, I'm thinking, what about the next gen? You're not that young, honey. No, I would say that about you. Um, oh, sure. Um, but how are we championing the next generation? And that's what I see, um, inside the uniting church is what i see inside generate and and inside propel yeah I, I, so i mean just a, a a two minute rundown for people who don't know the governance of the uniting church why you don't look that up in your hobby time I'm not sure <laughs> each their own um so we have a number of different presbyteries within states so the states are governed by a synod uh so there are four presbyteries inside south australia one of them is an evangelical presbytery called generate and so that presbytery is fully geared, like Jenny said, around church planning, renewal, raising up young leaders, things like that. Um, that, that structure doesn't work nationally. And so it requires a, a group of like-minded people to come alongside one another and effectively do the same thing within a new structure. And that's where Propel comes in. So Propel is, is a network of evangelical churches across the Uniting Church in Australia. Um, we're really excited about there's, Yeah, there's a conference in two weeks here in Adelaide that we're really excited about. Um, so Adam Lowe up in Brisbane heads that up. Amazing man of God. Mm, great, great leader is. at uh, Real Life Uniting Church. And so, so like Jen said, our relationship with the Uniting Church has been really positive. So it's not just Generate and Propel. This, the Synod in SA have been really, really encouraging, mm. really supportive to us. Uh, there's been financial loans involved in church planning, uh, interest-free loans, I should say. And uh, there's been quite a constant sense of even obviously the United Church is very broad in its theological diversity, mm. uh, 
But there's been a sense from government, a government point of view that even if we're not aligned theologically, we recognize the need for this missionally. Yeah. And so we're behind you. Mm. Wow. And, and so that's powerful. You know, yeah. It's not flawless by any means, but it is powerful. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so good. Uh, and particularly for those who maybe had, you know, weren't aware of the dynamics of that. And, and every system has its challenges, right? And so yeah. you're, you're definitely speaking the language of a lot of different planters and those who are invested in multiplication. The, the next question that I had for you guys was particularly around you two and, and the way that you lead together. I know when it comes to uh, planting a church and particularly the planters or the couple that might be involved, and of course, every uh, church and, and planter has its own dynamics, but you guys are really endeavouring to lead together as you plant and lead Encounter Church into the future. And that brings about its own unique challenges. You know, I could definitely share some stories from our challenges here in Western Sydney, um, but I wonder if you guys would speak to that and both the joy of doing that together and obviously the challenges that come with that. Mm, like the challenge of not being able to go to Melbourne in six hours. Okay. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm just joking. Yeah, 100%. Like we really felt quite called again to um, church plant together. Mm. And so we had to work out what does that actually mean? Because it's easy enough to say that, like you're going to yes. do it. And I think in the first little while you kind of, we, we personally butted heads because we were like, we were just doing everything. You're just kind of involved well, in everything. So we were just strong personality. Oh, 100%. So we're we're yeah. going to buy heads. Yeah, yeah. And actually, it's, it's great. It actually brings out some gold. But yeah, I think, you know, we were doing, when you start church planning, you kind of do everything. Like we were really blessed with a great core team and they, they did different areas. But you do, you do kind of everything. And it's only after a while do you start to go, okay, what is actually my hat? What is actually your hat? And I think one of the benefits of co-pastoring that we found is that we really have different strengths. Yeah. We do. And and when we work, we work so well together, we bounce off each other and bring the best out of each other. And so it's actually been, like I would say that, you know, it's actually been really good for our marriage. Wow. It was super hard for a little while, don't get me wrong. And there's, you know, elements of that are, it, when you're working, like if you work with your spa, spouse, doesn't matter what industry you're in, Absolutely. you know, and you live with them, you know, like you, it, it's a lot of time together. But in general, like it's actually been really good for us because I think we've learned about our own strengths and how to use them together. Mm, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, there's that beautiful proverb, 27, 17, that as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. The thing about iron sharpening iron is it makes sparks fly. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't know it's working until you see the sparks fly. Yeah, good mark. So, yeah. For us, um, some of the practical aspects, we both have the same job title. We are both lead pastor. Um, for a bunch of practical reasons, I've been the one getting paid up to this point. We're just uh, in the process of divesting that and splitting it wow. exactly in two. So that's uh, the next step for right. us. Uh, it's already been approved by our council, et cetera. Um, but like Jen said, we have different strengths. And so mm. one of my greatest strengths is in teaching, preaching, communication, which means I'm up the front more. I'm in front of a microphone more. I'm seen more which yeah. means instinctively people put their trust in me, whether that's credible or not is, is questionable, mm -hmm. but that's instinctively where people put their trust, the person they see. Yeah. So on, on hosting on a Sunday, Jenny gets so annoyed at me all the time because I'm like, all right, you're hosting, let's go, let's go. <laughs> and some days she'd rather not, but yeah. if she doesn't, if she's not up in front of the people more often, yeah. that's where people can sometimes go, oh, this is it's really Mike's church and Jenny's mm -hmm. helping me. Mm -hmm. you know? It, it only takes one pastor's wife comment for Jenny to realize like, yeah, no, I uh, need a host again next week. Um, yeah. And so Jenny preaches and teaches too. That's just more of the balance of it. Um, but the other thing is we've, we found it's stuff that we didn't know we were good at. Like, so yeah. for me, a little bit of that has come with sort of one-to-one -one pastoral care, which again, oh, I'm okay at it, but there's, there's almost a counseling aspect that I'm like, ah, oh, man, I'm better at that than I thought. That's great. Wow. So we just spend some time, particularly with our young leaders who are working out their emotional intelligence and their giftings, drawing that out. For Jen, it's been high level leadership. Wow. She, she is a top, top level leader. So she comes alongside and coaches and mentors, our best leaders, our best pastors. I don't do that. I do very little of it. Yeah. Jenny does most of that because that's her gifting. So she'll gather people in a room, challenge them, set them a goal and then catch back up with them and uh, continually grow them in that. So in a sense, we divide it up a bit executive and teaching. Yeah. We don't name that in our job titles because we don't ever want that delineation to be that clear mm. Clear for us, but within the church, that, that equality is pretty important. And I think in co-pastoring, I think pride really does have to die. Yeah. Because for me, I'm like, well, maybe I should preach more because then people would see us as like equal co-pastors or whatever. And it's like, no, 
no, Jen, like if, 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 that's, mm. what if that's what God's given him, why should he not be doing that? Like he wow. should, he, I want to, I want to see God's kingdom known throughout the world. And that's not going to happen by me being up there every single Sunday preaching. Like, no. you know, not, I, I don't want to take up, like, I, I don't want to not speak because obviously God gives me words and you know, there's things like that, which is great. And I love to preach and teach, but you know, I think we've got to die to what we want to do and look at what actually God wants to do. And that's when we see things actually flourish. Yeah. That's such a, a, a real yet encouraging word, guys. So I really, really appreciate it as you guys have thought deeply about that. And that's so true. Like ultimately what we want for the Aussie church is for God's kingdom to come and his will to be done. And, and you know, even going back to what we we're talking about with ego, sometimes some things need to die in order for that to really flourish. Yeah. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Every time I get a church planning wife, you know, like a, a, you know, you're the you're the pastor's wife. I die a little bit inside, but also my pride dies a little bit and goes yeah. over it. Like the, the flip side's there for me too. Like Jen's so good at that, but the mm. flip side's there to me too because I think like, oh man, shouldn't shouldn't I be overseeing our highest level leaders, our staff, our you know, mm. our, our, our coordinators? But yeah, what really? No, yeah. she's just better than me, and so. Yeah that obedience commands a blessing yeah right. blessing comes with knowing your graces yeah, yeah. Knowing your lane. that's awesome guys hey as as we're nearing the end of our time more some more rapid fire questions that i'd love to hear from you briefly before yeah. i ask you one final question together um your greatest influences when it's come to planting like who have you guys lent in by way of example literature all that kind of stuff sure um like probably the probably the way we are building our church john tyson's probably the greatest example of the kind of church we're wanting to create particularly yeah. around being both holding word and spirit really yeah. carefully yeah. hand in hand uh which, which can be difficult but is a great joy um we very much want to be an urban church plant uh, so keller and his work uh, center church obviously mm. is a magnum opus and yeah. apparently and that's only the notes uh <laughs> this guy here in sa called don redden who leads the city light family of churches cool. He's been a phenomenal support yeah. to us uh, on mm. the ground, uh, practically in that sense. And I guess the other guys just Mark says in terms of Christ and culture and how do you engage and understand and interpret the culture to reach people today. Yeah. And as we've gone about, we've had a couple of people that have really got alongside us and that's been really helpful. So we just had Zoom meetings like once a month or once a fortnight with different leaders. So, we, you know, we originally started with meeting with Joel Cave and we um, mm -hmm. met with um, Sam DeMario and, and people like that. And they've been really championing us. And I think that's really yeah. important in the church planning journey. Like you need to have other mm -hmm. people who have done it before and can give you really really wise advice yeah can i just say any aspiring church plants just reach out and ask these people yeah, totally. yeah, at yeah. the end of the church of the city podcast it says if there's anything we can do for you reach out so i did i was like can i have a zoom with john tyson <laughs> i'm from adelaide i just yeah. played hard really hard yeah. I just, yeah and it worked so you know oh just, good go it's true i think people are far more approachable than we think yeah, yeah that's definitely been my my situation as well um greatest joys and greatest challenges of planting you know as much as it's so hard to ask you know short fire question joys challenges i mean the joys is absolutely seeing people come to know jesus and grow in their faith like we have a two of our closest friends now gave the life to jesus about four weeks into church, and they're they're just on fire for jesus that's absolutely the joy 100% uh yeah seeing young leaders grow and yeah. be released like we absolutely love that uh and yeah I mean you mentioned conversion and, and seeing huge discipleship growth that's massive we baptized our daughter at the end of last year that was just mm. beautiful um we have a very uh what well, we try and eventize things wherever possible not because we love events but because we love invitation yeah, and right. that easy to create invitation to so baptisms are, are an example of that um Greatest, greatest griefs and losses are any, anytime you lose people and it's not of the kingdom, that's painful. Yeah. So if they're just walking away because they're dealing with some emotional stuff and they're not willing to manage it. Uh, if they're, you know, parable of the sower, the, the worst ones to me are the ones in the shallow soil because mm -hmm. they spring up and you get excited and you think they're being discipled, but they're not, not to the way you think they are. And that's, that's probably my greatest grief, seeing those people walk away and we just try and keep a really big open door pastorally. Yeah. Want to add anything so, to that? No, nah, I think that is most definitely the painful thing. Because oh, cool. you invested. No, I was saying this on the other day, like another pastor friend of mine, and I was like, nobody else thinks about, like they don't think about us as much as we think about them. Yeah. Like, yeah that's yeah. a pastoral heart that we have. And so when somebody leaves, it, it hurts. Uh, we need to stress, we don't mean transfers either. Like we just lost one of our best young leaders because she's getting married to a guy from another church. That's it's, exciting. That's that's exciting. That's great. She's going to prosper in her faith there. But those people where they're, they're on a track and then they bail. That's mm. that's great. 
Yeah, well, thanks for that, guys. Um, my last question, and we kind of alluded to this earlier on in our time together, uh, particularly for your heart to see church planting and multiplication become far more widespread in the Aussie church. And I guess, you know, what is one thing that you would be saying to, and it's an audacious thing to think about, but to the Australian church, um, you know, particularly if a church might be sitting there going, I wonder whether we've got church planting within us. I wonder if we could try something new or have a crack at something or even uh, prayerfully and financially support something else in order to see uh, new life happen. What would you kind of want to encourage the Australian church with as someone may potentially be listening to this today? Yeah, I think um, I read a book um, or most of a book because, you know, we were like that, right? Um, <laughs> a book called Gaining by Losing. Wow. And um, and I think one of the things is, is if you're going to church plant, you are going to lose some things. So, you know, if you're going to church plant and send out people, you are, it means your, your other your home church, let's call it, is, is going to be smaller. But what you're not, you can't focus on that. You have to focus on what God's doing to grow. And yep. so you've got to, you, you may have to lose some things to grow some things. And, and that's scary. And the problem, the reason we don't church plant is we're so scared mm. about what we're going to lose rather than going, okay, what are we actually going to gain for the kingdom? Yep. What are we going to gain? And if you can focus on that and go, yes, I am going to lose stuff. That is, and it's actually okay. Yeah. I think more churches, more churches will go, okay, yes, I can church plant. And and you're never ready. I don't think you're ever ready. Absolutely. Ready. It's a bit like having kids. You're never ready, but sometimes it's thrust upon you, you know? That's right. <laughs> I, I, would, I would just say as well, lift lift up your eyes, Australian church. There's, yeah. there's a harvest. And, wow. you know, Jesus calls us to pray, not for the harvest, but for the workers. Mm. And so if we've got the workers, we've got to send them out in the harvest. And wow been a really really hard stretch absolutely we, yeah. we felt it as as well as everybody else but it's there the harvest is there the workers are there we need to pray them in send them out it's wow. not our building it's not our finance they're not our people they all belong to jesus mm. so the more we can do that the more we can hand them back over um the more freedom you'll find and, yeah. and the more fruit you'll find as well mm. and just don't give up we just can't give up we cannot stop and rest on yeah. the fact you know we can't stop and rest on the fact that we've planted one church yeah like that's not that's not enough like, i'd like to what, some days yeah absolutely yeah. like i'm sometimes i'm heaps tired and grumpy but you know that's not we can't do that we cannot give up church we have to keep planting mm. we have to keep seeing more people come to know jesus because the truth is new church plants do see more people come to know jesus that's yeah. just the stats yeah yeah that's amazing guys such a from start to finish, hearing some of your journey, some of your insights, and some of your encouragements there at the end have just been so, so, yeah, I, I know I'm going to bless people as they hear this today. So, Mike and Jenny, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Hope you rest well, Mike. Hope that the isolation is not too, um, yeah, you know, cavernous, but, um, yeah, really appreciate your time today, guys. Thanks so much Love for it. having us. Thanks, Charlie. Bless you, mate. Thanks for listening. For more great resources, please head to our website at exponential.org.au.